Today we're diving into the world of GORM to explore two powerful features, preload and join functions. Understanding these functions can significantly optimize how you handle database relations in your applications. In this video, we'll break down the differences between preload and join, showcasing each function's use through a practical example application. We'll discuss when and why you might choose one method over the other. Suppose we have an application where a user can create multiple notes. The model structures look like this, where the user ID in the notes table stores the ID of the user to whom the note belongs. Now, if we want to read the user information while querying the notes, we can use the preload function like this. Let's see what it translates to in SQL. Here it translates to two queries. The first one queries all entries from the notes table. Then, internally, it collects all the user IDs from the fetched notes. Next, it does another query to users with the IDs retrieved from the last query. In this case, there are only two IDs, 1 and 2. Let's see what a joins function looks like. Here in the query, we are fetching only the username of the user and the name of the note. These GORM functions translate to a join query to the database. Since we are fetching only the required fields, we need a new structure to hold the results that we have defined here. Let us see where to use which type of query. The preload method in GORM is used to perform eager loading of associations. The joins method is used to perform SQL joins explicitly. Preload comes in handy when you want to keep your queries simple and easy to understand. It does not require new structures to hold the result. On the other hand, the joins method is meant to fetch specific fields from the related tables. Preloading is essential to avoid the n plus 1 query problem. Joins is useful when you need to filter or sort data based on fields in the join table. Preload is effective when you need to load related data for multiple objects at once, as it executes separate queries but in a way that's optimized for handling batches of records. One should prefer joins when your query involves counts, sums, etc. across tables. Without further ado, let's jump to code. Here we have a simple JIN application with only one root. In the main function, we first connect to the database and then run the data migration. Let's see what data we have. These two structures represent the data models. This one represents the user model, and this one is for the notes. This user ID is the foreign key to ID in the user model. So a user can have multiple notes, and a note belongs to a user. In the language of ORM, we can say a user has many relationship with notes. And a note has belongs to relationship with a user. Let's go back to the main function. Here, we defined the JIN router. This is the only API we have implemented. The path is root and the handler is home handler. Let's go to the handler. Here we have a simple query that fetches all notes. It preloads users and store the fetched information in notes variable. Then, in the renderer, we pass this information to the template. Here is the template. Let's see what do we have there.
we simply loop over the notes here. Then here we print the name of the note, then its content. Along with this, we print the user information like name and the username. Let's run the program. Go to localhost 8080. Here it renders all the notes. This is notes details. This is the user info, name and username. In this case we used preload because we needed the user's details along with the notes and it loads this information at once. This helps us avoid multiple queries. Let's look at the queries preload did to the DB. This is the first query. It fetches all notes. This is the subsequent query that gets all the users that had notes. We have only two users with ID 1 and 2. Now we will see how and where we can use the joins method. Let's remove this code. Suppose we want to fetch only the username of the user and the corresponding title of the notes for a report. This can be achieved with a simple join of users and notes table. Let us write the query. So, on the notes model, we select notes.name. And users.username. Then, using the joins method, we will join these two tables. Left join users. On notes.userID is equal to user.id. To collect the results, we use the scan method. To collect data fetched by the query, the scan function requires a structure that contains these two fields. Let us create a new structure. We will call this structure query result. First field is the name of the note. The second field is the username. Let's instantiate a slice of this structure. Now collect the query result in this variable. Next, we send the fetch data to the view. The key is cut join data. Now we will make changes to the view. To save time, we will paste the view here. Here we loop over the data. Here we print the name of the note and the username of the user. Restart the program. Refresh the page. Now it shows the title of the note and the username of the user. This is a good use case of the joins method as we needed specific fields from the related tables, users and notes. Let's look at the query it has done. This is a typical left join performed at the database level. Next, we will consider a query that involves getting a count using group by. Let's say we want to fetch all users' email or username along with the count of notes they have created. We don't need this code. For such queries, I am more comfortable writing a raw SQL query. We use the raw method to write raw queries. Let's write this query.
Again, we will use the scan method. We need a structure to save the query result. The structure should have a field for username and the count, note count. Let's create a structure, raw result. A thing to be noted here is, the fields in the structure should be camel case of the column names. Now create a slice of this structure and use it in the scan method. Next pass this data to the view. Let's make changes to the view. We will paste the changes here. The variable we are using in the view is different. Let's change the key in the controller. Here, we loop over the data and print the username of the user and the count of notes that belong to them. Let's see what happens now. Now, here in the view, we get to see all users and the count of notes. This is another good use case of using the joins method instead of preload as query involves aggregating data like counts across tables. And that wraps up our deep dive into the powerful preload and joins functions of GORM in Golang. Remember, choosing between preload and joins depends on your specific needs, whether it's ease of coding or optimizing performance. Experiment with both in your projects to see which works best for your scenario. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more practical coding insights. Have questions or want to share your experiences with GORM? Drop a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, keep coding and stay efficient.